Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another falconry video. Today's video, I'm gonna be talking about passage accipiters, which is a family of hawks, and whether or not they are the perfect falconry bird. And I'll tell you why. Now, if you're new to falconry or still learning about this, of course, gotta lay down a little bit of groundwork on what we're talking about here. So first of all, what is an accipiter? There's different groups of birds of prey, different taxons that are utilized in the sport of falconry. Of course, falcons, which are typically uh, long, narrow-winged, open country birds that uh, use momentum and dive and want to hit birds out of the air. Then you have your budios, like a red-tailed hawk or a fruginous hawk, which are long, broad-winged hawks that are usually rodent hunters in the wild and are most often utilized to hunt rabbits and hares. Then you have, of course, your true eagles, like golden eagles, uh, tawny eagles, things like that, that are also most often used for hunting rabbits. But your accipiters, or true hawks, are the forest hawks. So these would be things like a northern goshawk uh, or a cooper's hawk. Uh, a Eurasian sparrow hawk, and of course a sharp-shinned hawk. Now, all now true hawks, the accipiters, they uh, have very, very short wings that are very broad and very rounded, and they have incredibly long tails. They have a faster frame rate than any other raptor as far as how they visually perceive, and they are built to be able to dodge in and out of branches. They can hunt in the open country just fine, and often are in falconry, but they're built to be able to ambush through trees and bushes. Uh, they've been highly prized for thousands of years in falconry, from the big goshawks to the tiny sparrowhawks and everything in between. Now, what is a passage bird? Birds of prey, they hatch and they grow very quickly, and they're full size within a few months of hatching. Um, but they have first year colors. So they're full sized, but they have colors that are different than an adult. Once they make it to one year old, that, so that first, so after they leave their parents' care and are still in that first year, they're a passage bird. Then once they reach their first summer at a year old, they start molting and growing in adult colored feathers, and then they become a haggard bird. So we're talking about a bird that is a, an accipiter, a true hawk, that has left its parents' care, but still has first year colors. That is a passage bird. We're talking about passage accipiters and why on earth they would be the perfect falconry bird. And it, the, the reasons why are pretty cut and dry. Accipiters arguably are the most capable hunting raptors as far as their speed, their agility, their tenacity, their aggression towards prey if it's properly directed. They can hunt and hunt and hunt all day, every day. A lot of birds, like if you have a red-tailed hawk and you go out and they catch quarry, then they might be, okay, let me eat up. I'm done for the day. That was a very athletic hunt. I went chasing a rabbit. I caught a jackrabbit or I caught a cottontail. And now I'm ready to eat and call it a day. Uh, same thing, a falcon. You might be flying a large falcon, like a you, you put a deer falcon up and it circles up and it goes up thousands of feet and then it dives down and catches a pheasant or a sage grouse and it's sitting on the ground. It's done this very athletic flight. Uh, maybe it'll want to fly again, but normally it's like, okay, that bird has had its flight for the day. Accipiters can go, again, all day, every day. They can just hunt nonstop, uh, which is which is really good for anciently when people were trying to get food or they used to be called the cook's bird because a cook or a chef would go out in the morning and catch a few rabbits, catch a few ducks and bring them in back in and use that to uh, cook up in the, in the inn or the restaurant. Uh, it's, it's a very practical bird in that way. So a passage, why a passage? Well, a passage bird would be maybe September, October, you have the chance to trap a goshawk and its passage. What are the virtues of this bird? Just about everything, okay? It has left its parents' care and it's been at that for a few weeks to a few months. That is good. That means it's not gonna look to you directly as a parent if you're feeding it, which will make aggression disappear and make the potential for vocalization and screaming and doing food begging towards a parent not be directed towards you and should be non-existent. That's great. That's great news. Uh, the next thing is they know how to hunt and they've built their flight muscle. If a goshawk, for example, has made it to October and they're alive, they've made it through some of the harshest first steps of leaving parental care, which is learning how to actually hunt and chase prey and catch it effectively every single day and to build enough muscles that your prey doesn't outfly you. So they know what they're doing. They know how to hunt. They know how to fly. They don't think you're the parent. So they're perfect. Uh, it, they're some of the quickest birds to train. Really all you're doing is training them to trust you 
And other than that, you're just letting them go back to what they were doing before you caught them. So uh, you that this is an example I always preach against excessively feeding off of the fist, especially with occipiters. But a passage trapped occipiter, hey, you're feeding them off the fist, let them get used to that, let them build that trust, especially initially. And after that, of course, you're going through the normal straining stages, eating off the fist, hop to the fist, fly to the fist, fly to the fist outdoors, fly to a lure. And then you're just like, all right, let's go. <laughs> what were you hunting? What's the quarry we're going to go after? We're going to let you go after it. Uh, and and they already know what they're doing. You don't have to train them how to hunt. You have to train them how to trust you and to allow you to be a part of their uh, whole predator and prey cycle. And they already know how to do that. And it works great. Um, I would, that would be my first pick. If I could guaranteed have a passage goshawk, I would pick that over any other, over an imprint raised, a captive bred, a parent raised, all these other things. So why doesn't everybody always fly a passage exhibitor? Now, again, I understand this video, it, you know, can be seen all over the world. So maybe you live in a country where it's different and, and, you know, maybe, maybe, the sippers in your area, maybe the mindset will be a little different about going about trapping them, training them, and what bird will be the best. But where I live, you know, these birds have, are starting to be familiar with the cold. They understand urgency. They understand, oh my goodness, a free meal is something to be trusted. You can usually have uh, a, a sharpshin hawk, a cooper's hawk, a goshawk eating off your fist right off the bat. And they're like, wait, food? Okay, all right, hey, this is way easier than chasing something. And it just works so slick. The problem is why most North American falconers you don't see uh, going after these. Uh, is because a lot of times, with a, with a few exceptions, I'll get to in a second, they're not easy to come by. They're common, but they're not easy to find. If you're looking for a red-tailed hawk, you can just go drive around, and a red-tailed hawk is a bootio. It's a soaring hawk, a, a rodent hunter. So it's gonna be sitting up on a phone pole or something, just scanning around. It's just like a big beacon saying, I'm here, they're easy to find. Same thing, you're looking for kestrels, they're out in the open. Prairie falcons, easy to find. Even merlins. Uh, Merlin falcons are easy to find. They're usually in cities, but they're still going to be high up on poles. Occipiters are sneaky. They're like leopards. They're hiding and they want to rush out and get their food and go back to cover. So they're not necessarily easy to find. Most of the people in, in my circles, if they end up with a passage, sharpshinned hawk, cooper's hawk, or goshawk, it is a bird that they unexpectedly came by. Maybe either, first of all, maybe they're out trapping and they just happen to have, see one dart across the road and they're like, oh, and they put out a trap for it and catch it. Or uh, maybe somebody's like, oh, I have, somebody has chickens and a goshawk key, or keeps landing, or you have pigeons and a cooper's hawk lands on the pigeon loft and keeps harassing them or even goes into the loft. That is where you're having people post online, oh, hey, we got this hawk, and, and maybe a falconer goes, they have an active trapping permit, so they can legally take that bird and train it. But it's not just like, hey, I am going out to trap goshawks. Now, that being said, there are ridge top trapping locations that work very good, that funnel in with the migration routes, and then you can consistently have passage occipiters flying through there. That takes a lot more work, a lot more thought, and a lot more planning than just, oh, hey, I got an afternoon, I'm driving around looking for a red-tailed hawk. But there are people all, I know for a fact, all around the United States who specialize in that form of trapping. They love ridgetop trapping, and it is, it is a highly effective way to do this. Uh, but again, if you're just trying to get a bird, then that's a lot more work and planning and scouting and setting up either a, a blind or even a whole shack to hide in while you're with your binoculars waiting for a hawk to come to you uh, as opposed to just driving around fruit farm fields trying to find a red-tailed hawk. So that is why most people who fly a sippers in the United States usually are getting a, ca a captive bred bird or they're getting a baby of some kind at some age. And I've said before on videos, if you can't get a passage bird guaranteed, then the next best thing is a family bird, which is a bird that has been raised by its parents and it has branched and is starting to fledge. It's hanging around the grove of trees where the nest is located. It might even sleep in the nest at night, but in the daytime it's out of the nest, food begging, and the parents are in the process of abandoning the babies. That is the perfect age if you can't get a passage bird. Now a bird that age will be friendlier than a passage bird but again, a passage occipiter has musculature build up. It knows how to hunt highly effectively. It's felt the cold, it understands urgency, and it trains 
even quicker and is it is much more effective but it is in my opinion if you're if you're going after quarry the passage goshawk for example is a near perfect bird uh, i just wish they were easier to guaranteed come by so that's kind of my philosophy about it but um i'm in utah i'm in in, in north america and the united states and utah so i'd love to hear your comments around the world i know a lot of people who follow this channel fly shikaras which are an occipiter I've never had the chance to work with and would love to. Um, but different temperatures, different migration routes, different quarry all around the world with the occipiters we fly. Please, I'd love to hear your comments, your observations in your area. And if the passage occipiters in your area are better to fly than a captive bred occipiter or something that was imprinted, I would love to hear. Because I think it's fun to collaborate and understand better this sport as a whole around the world. But I hope you found this video useful. Uh, let me know your comments and thoughts below and other ideas for videos. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. And as always, happy hawking.